Hello everybody, welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'm Martin Wenzel. It is afternoon, Sunday afternoon here in Pori, Finland. And I've got a truck full of protective clothing, 20 tons worth, headed to Lipeja. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Pospet, Postbed in Lipeja, Latvia. We'll be crossing uh, the Finnish Sea. I forget what sea that is. But we'll be taking a ferry over there. We're going to earn 10,000 euro on this trip. Should take us, I believe it said about 13, 12, 13 hours. And some of that's going to be the ferry. And we have 36 hours to do it in. So let's get on the road. Let's get all the stuff I want to see. I want that map there. Zoom that map in just a little bit. There we go. Lights are on. Let's get the wipers going because we do have some snowfall. And I think we can just pull out and go left. Hey, we're driving an Iveco today. quite a few of these on the road in China. So as you can see it's snowing. Last time we drove in the morning here on Sunday through Finland and nice and dark and snowy all morning. And now we're in the afternoon, and it's about the same weather. This is Grimes's Frosty Winter Mod for Euro Truck Simulator 2. Similar to what you get in American Truck Simulator, except with this you can also add in a physics, an optional physics edition, and the Heavy Winter edition. And this is right now Heavy Winter, you can see there's snow building up on the road. And the physics. Now, I'm not sure how much of that is that I don't have braking set up. Ooh, look at that looked pretty icy there, didn't it? I don't know how much of that is that I have what my braking intensity is. I don't have any idea what my braking intensity is set at right now in Euro Truck Simulator. But it is definitely... Oh, look at that yield sign in the middle of the road. And it's taking a little damage. Especially with this weather. We have a little bus. Uh, you have the right of way. Continue along, sir. Of course, he took so long that now we've got other traffic coming. Alright, we can go. What? Uh, what? Why? Why would you try to take your left turn? Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, he would have had the right of way, wouldn't he? I was thinking he was going to turn up before me. I don't know why. Uh, I believe that was a moose warning or something. Elk warning. As I was saying last time, this is the closest I'm going to get to driving in northern Wisconsin in a truck simulator because the right American truck simulator is going. We're not going to be getting up to the Midwest, the snowy Midwest, for quite a few years. Unless they really start pumping it out. All right, so we're gonna be headed south to Latvia. Uh, last time at the end of the episode, I was starting to get into a little story about my um, harrowing adventures. I don't know if they're harrowing, but kind of a series of misfortunes or a comedy of errors on my part and everyone I need to help me with this. So, as I was saying, my Chinese visa, I live in China, I have my own English school over here, and every year I have to get a visa to remain in China working. And that visa expires February 11th, so I need to get a new visa prior to then. 
Unfortunately, I forgot that I also had to get more passport pages for my US passport, because I can't give you the visa if you have no pages. You need two open pages. I have zero left. And it's not as simple as just going to the Shanghai consulate. I live near, well, about four hours away from Shanghai. It's not as easy as just going to the US consulate in Shanghai and requesting some additional passport pages. Because they have discontinued that service, you need to actually get a full new passport. Ugh, I'm trying to slow down. There's just no... <laughs> By the time I get slowed down to 50, we're already out of the town. Of course, the penalties do not hurt as much in this series because we are... Well, okay, we're going back down to 50. It said 80 coming out there. All right. Yeah, the penalties don't hurt as much here because I'm not using classes economy mod to make it harder or more realistic rather. Making 10,000 or 10,000 euro a job, no problem. All right, so back to the story. Need a new passport. So we go to Shanghai. I get the last possible appointment that's going to be able to get me this passport on time. I should have done this months ago, but completely slipped my mind. Didn't realize I actually needed new pages this year. Go to Shanghai, get the last possible appointment where I can apply for it. That was, I believe, January 17th, a week ago from when I'm recording this video. And I go and I say to the, I say to the person at the window, I need this passport before February 11th. Actually before February 9th, because the 11th is a Sunday and they're closed on the weekends, right? So I'm gonna need this probably I need to be able to pick this up on February 9th. Not arriving, they can't arrive there on February 9th, they tell me to come pick it up the next day because the next day would be Monday and be too late. So I need to be there on February 8th. And they say, yeah, it takes two to three weeks, you know, and on the website it says two to four weeks, but they said, no, it'll be okay, two to three weeks, it'll be here on time. And so I'm like, okay, give them the money, I pay, pay for it, send the application in, feeling pretty good, drive back, to my home. The drive back to my home, that was a whole different issue, and we'll, we'll talk about that in the future. But that's Chinese driving, and that's a whole other issue. So, I get to get home, and then the weekend happens. And what happened the weekend, January 20th, somewhere around there, is that the good old US government shut down. Which means, oh great, my passport's not gonna arrive on time. Now, again, my fault for waiting until the last possible second, and I needed everything to go right, and then everything decided to go wrong. The US government shuts down of all people, right? Of all things. So now I'm scrambling. Okay, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I can't really call anyone at the US government, at least in Shanghai. They're not at work. The government shut down, they're furloughed. So I'm thinking, okay, gonna have to buy plane tickets and go back to America. When I get to America, I'll have to, hopefully the government will be open again. By then, I'll have to call the government and say, hey, can you, instead of sending my passport to Shanghai where I won't be able to pick it up because I won't be able to go back to China because I won't have a new visa because I don't have my new passport and no one will be able to pick it up for me, can you send it to my address in America? And so I'm thinking that's what was gonna happen. I was gonna have to spend I was gonna have to go on an unscheduled vacation back home, visit my family. Not the end of the world. It's a perfect time to do it, actually. February is Chinese New Year, and so we would not be having classes. I think we're having we're gonna have two weeks off, but we could have extended it to three or four. It would not have been the end of the world. It would have been inconvenient. It would have been a little bit more expensive than I would have liked, but and kind of dash some of our plans for next year. We actually want to go back to America in December. Christmas with my family but it was like that's not the end of the world I it, I have no problem going back home and eating some good Western food and spending a couple weeks in the land of the free the home of the brave and the heat in the houses and not always freezing and not always dodging Chinese drivers well then the government reopens on Tuesday Yesterday, I believe. Yesterday, two days ago, from when I'm recording this, on the 24th. 
Now I'm in a pickle. What do I do? Passport could arrive on time. Probably won't, but it could. And then if it arrives on time and I've already bought tickets, okay, I go pick it up and then I go back home, right? Apply for the Chinese visa in America. Still not the end of the world, but an expense that I don't actually need to do. Or it doesn't arrive on time and I still go through my plans of going back to America and having to figure out how to solve that problem. So we call the Chinese visa office and we ask them, can you give us an extension? Can you give me an extension rather? This is my problem. Can you give me an extension if my passport doesn't arrive? Can we come in on, and they said, yeah, come in February 8th. If your passport hasn't arrived, come in and we'll give you an emergency temporary visa, you know, just on a regular, probably a sheet of paper or something, I don't know. And, whoa. And you'll be all set, you'll be able to stay and wait for your passport. Once you get your passport, come in and apply for the full on visa. Cool. All right, so it seems like problem solved there. I am, my fingers are crossed because, you know, I feel like I'm going to show up on February 8th at the last second and they're gonna say, oh, we can't do that. And now I'm gonna have to buy tickets day before to fly out of China and do the same exact thing that I was planning on doing anyway. Of course, that could be, we could avoid all that if my passport shows up. So I do have, I feel like I have leeway. I feel like the solve, problem's been solved. Weight's been lifted, but you never know. And I really do hope my passport shows up within the next couple weeks on time so I don't have to have my fingers crossed that the Chinese visa office will actually give me a temporary visa and not just pull my leg and say, ah, too bad, see ya. So that's my uh, misadventures of the last couple weeks. And sort of the reason why I haven't been pumping out videos is just because if I've been doing any game playing, it's just been playing the game, not trying to make any videos, not trying to edit anything, just trying to relax and breathe in between trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do. All right, so we are, I believe, let's see, what is this? Keha Ring. I like the three Roman, the Roman numeral three there. I'm not sure what that means. Look at this crazy intersection, interchange. That's what I love about uh, Pro Mods is that, and again, I always have to look back and pull out Pro Mods, check out what the base map is, but I don't think they have these crazy big interchanges everywhere like Pro Mods does. What town are we coming up on? I think this is gonna be Helsinki. Well, it says 17 kilometers to Helsinki. That might be Helsinki ahead of us. The capital of old Finland. And hopefully we don't get dinged for speeding going in here. Yep, Helsinki, so we'll be discovering that. As we come into the evening hours, about 5.30, I'm debating whether I want to Take a little break and rest because this job we will not be finishing until three in the morning okay stop 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 it is not so you see uh, <laughs> yeah that's that physics so that's something we've really got to contend with just caused a little damage here didn't get dinged for uh monetary anything but we I, I think we'll probably lose some on the back end of this job from our employer for damaging his truck we are in Europe we can't turn right on red at least that's what I've been led to believe I'm not gonna risk it I just realized I actually have a map right there. I have a GPS, so I don't actually need to have the the overlay map on. I try not to always I try not to have the overlay map on when I don't need it. I 
Yeah, I'm kind of debating with myself. Should I stop here in Helsinki and then try to finish this job up tomorrow? Monday? Not the safest thing to be driving through the night. We do have nine hours to go. Oh, I didn't get a red light violation there. That light changed fast. And actually, yeah, I don't have a mod for making the lights, yellow lights longer, because that light turned yellow, and there was no way I was going to be able to stop in time. But by the by time I got to the intersection to the lights, it had already turned red. So that must have been why they didn't uh, ding me, because there was no way I was going to be able to stop in time. Not with this slick snow, at least. Well, let's turn on the blinker. I'm always a little confused why they do that. It's like, okay, thanks for letting me, but you have the right of way. Just go. I'll wait. And get on this little cobblestone road. Yeah, there's just no... I don't know if... Yeah, I must have my... I think I have my, uh... My braking intensity way too low. So there's no chance of me stopping. Actually, no, I'm not gonna rest. Because I can rest on the ferry. The ferry will actually reset my... My clock. Not that my clock is running out. Oh, did you see the... A little bit of engine smoke exhaust coming from that car. That's cool. Here we are at the harbor. Some nice boats. So we'll actually be taking the ferry, so I won't need to rest at a rest stop or hotel or anything here in Helsinki. I can just take the ferry, and that will count as my rest, and I think that will probably set us to about midnight. Uh, where do I go? Where do I go? I think I go this way. One thing you don't have to navigate in American Truck Simulator are ferries. Yep, this will take us right to the ferry. Wow, look at that. There's actually some traffic in the ferry. I don't remember there ever being other vehicles actually in the ferry. That's really cool. Alright, let's see. Where do we want to go? Tallinn, we have one option that's going to take us two hours. So actually when we get to Tallinn, we'll then find a place to sleep. Just to keep the realism going. Alright, we're in Tallinn. Tallinn, I believe Estonia. I think Tallinn is the capital of Estonia, if I'm not mistaken. It is 8 in the evening, it's a cold, uh, 
I hate it when this happens. Where do I go? They couldn't make it like a little bit more clear. I think I can actually, can I just rest here? Truck's right there. I think I can rest here. I do have a sleeper. Let's see, this should let me rest. Hmm, not sure why I'm not getting the little rest icon, but I will just simulate the rest and pick this up in the morning, Monday morning. So, until then, see you in a few hours. Okay, welcome back. It's 7 in the morning, Monday. Had our rest, so let's get back on the road. Continue on to our destination. What is our destination? Lipaya. Latvia. Alright, so we're gonna back out of here. No snow this morning. No small, no snow falling, at least. Trining, trining, trying to find my way out of here. There it is. Not a lot of signage. Nice clear morning as we enter Estonia. Did you see that police car and that left turning car just smashed into each other? And that was totally the police car's fault. He did not yield at that uh, right turn. Oh, oh, and this guy's gonna be a... What are you doing? You have a red light. Again. Seems like every... That's the second time that's happened tonight, filming. Ugh, there's just no way. Oh, luckily the light turned green. There's just no way. I mean, you cannot stop at these stoplights going 90. I mean, that was a silly section there where you're going 90 and then you have to come out to a stoplight. And that's how it is uh, out front of my apartment here. The highway is 90 kilometers per hour, but like every... Every, uh... Probably every 500 meters, probably every half kilometer, is uh, another stoplight, set of traffic lights, and it's just, it's insane. 
seeing people s slam on their gas, get up to 90, and then have to slam on their brakes, or in a lot of cases, just completely bypass the red light by moving slightly over into the emergency lane and then saying, well, I'm in the emergency lane, so the red light doesn't count for me. Always a joy seeing that when I'm getting dinged for slight speeding while I'm getting blown by. You know, cars are just flying past me going 30, 40 kilometers per hour faster than me. Incredibly dangerous conditions. And I'm getting dinged for going five over. I got a warning for either moose or elk. This highway looks a little just kind of right in the snow. Got a nice morning, nine in the morning. Got the sun coming out, giving us a little pink hue on the snow. Similar effect we've seen in American Truck Simulator. And they're gonna say slow down again, probably, aren't they? Oh, no, no. Oh, no slow down. All right. I did pump up the brake intensity setting just a little bit during that uh, rest period. I think I had it down next to zero which already made it incredibly hard to stop without even having slippery winter conditions. And simply the scale of Euro Truck Simulator does not allow for the true distance for braking. So if I see a stoplight now, I should be braking now, but that's 10, 15 kilometers. That's a half an hour. Could be wasted just braking, slowing down. I think I slowed down decently enough there, but it was close. Parnu. Look at this nice little town. I mean, these, these towns just look so realistic. I, I They look... They just seem more realistic than the ones they have in American Truck Simulator. Or again, they just have that Midwestern charm that I so... I, I'm so familiar with compared to the Southwest. It's just something different, and so that's why we're jumping in here, playing some Euro Truck Simulator. Don't have to be so worried about my cash flow in this game. With, uh setup I have going. We're not doing a realistic economy at all. Just playing the vanilla vanilla economy. Which is super easy. And just different environment. I mean this again I if you didn't tell me I was in Europe and I wasn't driving European truck I, right now I would think I was in Minnesota or Wisconsin. I mean the 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 power lines, the... I mean, th basically everything looks very Midwestern. Maybe not the guardrails so much. Right here in the traffic light. These gantries, but... Feels very much like a... Midwestern area. With snow... Nice snow cover. I'm gonna have to do a little research as we go forward. Hey, I never noticed that on the... I see, I just keep going off on different topics. I never noticed that on the traffic lights, they have arrows. And the arrows don't light up themselves. Which, I'm thinking they're supposed to, but... They just have a solid red. Kind of interesting. Maybe, they, maybe they're able to change them, I don't know. Oh yeah, see the green is. Shows up correctly. That's cool. Wonder if that's something that has been added by Pro Mods. This 
a nice just just so much different stuff to see in Euro Truck Simulator and that's why every once in a while you need to get back into it if you're a if you have both games if you have both American and Euro Truck Simulator you just you just have to you have to rotate between the two switch back and forth you can't just play one over and over because it's a little dull all right we need to actually go left try to get in the right lane yeah it's like they have the arrows but they don't light the yellow and red one up as the arrow so I don't know if that's just like I said maybe it's something pro mods add and they don't have it perfected it's cool either way it looks pretty cool all right, we still have five hours to go on this trip. The format for the Euro Truck series is a little different. We do, the videos are based on the job. So some videos are gonna be pretty short, depending if it's a short job. Some videos might be a little longer if it's a longer job. Debating whether to switch it over to just doing a day just like the American truck, because that one you can kind of know, okay, it's going to be about, a, you can work it down to about a half an hour each episode. Because this one might be quite a bit longer than last episode. Last episode, just the raw recording was 35 minutes. And that was a job that went from 5 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon. This job we started at 2 and we've been kind of driving almost all day here. So that might be some, that might be a little change I might look at just to keep the videos from running too long. While allowing a lot of it to be actual driving and not just sped up footage with sound, with uh, music playing in the background. Whoa. All right, I got a little too fast around that corner. Almost ran into that oncoming truck and then almost went off the road correcting. All right, we're gonna be headed towards Riga. That's gonna be 14 kilometers away. And we can see the golden arches ahead. I've been noticing, and I was just thinking about it when we were mentioning the stoplights traffic lights with the little arrows not showing up and all that oh look at that sign that all of this is actually pro mods Estonia Latvia um, Lithuania are all pro mods 100% and there is nothing in the base map I mean they there might I mean obviously some assets maybe but the the countries themselves, none of this stuff is in the base map, so all these cities and everything, this is all from the incredible creators at ProMods, and one thing ProMods does is that you can download it for free. You'll have to combine the... Oh man, come on! 
you have to combine the the individual zip files to get your thing working. It takes a little bit longer, the server is slower. Or you can pay a dollar and fifty a dollar for pro mods and get get it all one one uh, file, one zip file, and all compiled and everything, ready to go. And another 50 cents if you want the trailer and company's pack that goes along with it. So you're paying $1.50 every time they update it. And for what you're getting, $1.50, I mean, it, you know, let's say you do 10 updates, that, that ends up being about eleven fifty, right? Whoa, did you s oh no. That car did not even try to brake, he just drove straight- Oh, what? What are with the cop cars? <laughs> ay ay ay. This is- wow. I'm just thinking of, uh, titles for this video. And I'm trying to talk about something else, but now I'm gonna talk about the title for this video. I don't know. I was thinking, like, uh, government shutdown, folly of errors, something. I think that's what it's gonna be, you know, comedy of errors. Because we talked about the whole visa passport situation, and now, I mean, I slammed into a car, or into the back of a truck, um, with the braking. Slippery roads, and then just saw a car pile into the back of a dump truck. And then, as we're passing the, that accident, police car takes a left turn right in front of us. I don't know if I just didn't notice him because he's a white car, or what, but... A little bit more damage for our truck. Oh joy. So we are in, still in Riga, and the amazing thing about the scale of Euro Truck Simulator, I think that's what we were talking about, if I'm not mistaken, is that all this is made by the fine creators at ProMaz, all for small donations, I mean, they, they probably can make some decent money. Now this guy, don't run into me. That was a little bit of a jerk move on my part. That all of this is made by guys at ProMaz, dollar to download every time they do an update right so you download it 10 15 times here you're paying about for a dlc this is a dlc worth of material and every time they update it it's incredible i mean look this this is one town this is riga this is one town this there's nothing like this in american truck simulator a town that big that much detail that many roads that many buildings and that's pro mods this is all this whole country is pro mods. A whole country. And that's not to mention, you know, Est you know, Estonia, Latvia. I think we're still in Estonia, but then you have Latvia, you have Lithuania, Iceland, parts of Ireland, parts of Italy, parts of Spain. There's a lot of added stuff. Why? What's going on here? All for a dollar. A dollar a download. And you can always download for free as well. So, quite amazing work from these guys. Definitely, they are pro modders. And then they got the little street signs, or the highway signs that actually show up quite uh, frequently as they would in real life. Great stuff. Okay, dude. Road narrows, I'm moving over. You should know that. Please allow me to move over. Don't be a big jerk. Let's look at our damage. We got 6% damage on the truck, 1% damage on the trailer. Joy of joys, right? What are you gonna do? Again, what's happened on this trip would be a huge problem in American Truck Simulator, in that series where we are doing the realistic hard economy mod from class. And this one, we have a little bit more leeway, so we can actually wreck and do all kinds of stuff like that. Not trying to, I don't want to get in those situations, but sometimes the unavoidable happens. Not debilitating on this profile. Look at this. I mean, just, this is amazing. The snow, I can actually feel it rumbling as I drive through it. Through my steering wheel as I kind of pop over the little mounds of snow. Got a nice construction zone here. Lipaya, 197 kilometers. On here it says we only have 148 kilometers to go. So, 
Not sure if our destination where we're actually dropping off is a little bit outside of Lapaya. But we got, in any case, we have two and a half hours to go. And so far we haven't driven on any uh, expressways. It's just been these two two-lane highways. We're on the A9. Whoa! Ay -ay -ay. And believe me, that gets my heart racing, not only in the game, but that's stuff I see. That happens on the regular here in China as I drive buses flying out on right turns like that. Lilupe. 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 <laughs> it looks like a something I would see in like Mexico or New Mexico, like a kind of a Spanish sounding uh, river name there. I'm most definitely saying it wrong. I'm probably saying it with a kind of a Spanish tint to it, where we are in Lat... I, ass I assume we're in Latvia now. Didn't notice us go across any border yet, so we might still be in Estonia. Definitely nowhere near Spain or a Spanish-speaking country. part about the pro mods the signs well I mean, I, okay maybe not the best part but it's just another attention to details like right there a little tiny village scrunda they had a sign for it american truck simulator some of the small villages have signs some don't most don't they just have these small little towns which do have names in real life and I try to put signs in my videos to let you know, hey, this is, I think this is the such and such town, right? Right there, I know that's Skrunda. They put a sign. Put a sign saying it's no longer Skrunda. That was cool. Uh, a few kilometers back, it looked like there was a school or something near that big interchange, intersection, so. Pro Mods, I cannot sing the praises of Pro Mods enough, and my only uh, regret is that Pro Mods isn't over there in American Truck Simulator expanding America outward, making it bigger. People will say, well, they don't want to step on the toes of American Truck Simulator because you put all that work in and American Truck Simulator eventually is going to build, put that country in. Yeah, that's true. I assume... I feel like... Eh, I don't know how much uh, Pro Mods did of Italy or France before those two came out. But I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure at some point Euro Truck Simulator is going to expand out into Latvia and Estonia and more into Finland, you know. Well, maybe not in Finland and Scandinavia, they've already done that DLC pack. But I'm sure they'll do expand towards Russia and have a Russian DLC you got going east. Why not go further east and have a Ukraine and Russian DLC, right? And uh, Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. Now, most of the pro mod guys are, at least from my understanding, are European based, so they are modding what they know. Here we are, we are in Lepaya. Oh, that's great. They have the city shield and everything there. I recognize that after I looked at Wikipedia trying to figure out how to pronounce the name of this town Th just the intention detail I mean this this area right here looks so much better than everything else it's just the vanilla stuff right and 
the attention to detail is so much higher than American Truck Simulator, leaps and bounds. And again, like I said, I wish there was a group like that for American Truck Simulator or like this, Pro Mods, because this is all Pro Mods. Everything you're seeing right now, Pro Mods put. They're not just adding little bits to the existing map. No, this is all Pro Mods. Look at that guy walking with shorts in the snow. We got so many railroad tracks here. And I have to turn left, of course. In the wrong lane, have to turn left. We are just about our, to our destination. Three minutes, one kilometer. That guy's walking back and forth. This car is gonna be very friendly and let me turn left, get in and turn left. And we are going right there to post-bed, post-bed, something like that. Oop, this is only a one lane my direction. And it's just another, another pull through. So thanks for coming along on this trip, a little bit of a longer journey from Finland to Latvia. We're right now on the edge of the North Sea. And another successful job, a little bit of damage. And let's go, actually let's go to the, the job screen and see how much that damage cost us. All right, good work. Protective clothing delivered from Pori to Lipaya, almost 700 kilometers, 25 hours. And we lost $523. Now that would be debilitating. And that's not even counting the fines for red light and vehicle damage. 523 euro, that would be a death sentence in our American truck simulator uh, driving. And that's 1.2% damage penalty. Wow. But we make 10,000 euro on the job. So this means nothing. This is pennies to us almost because we're so filthy rich. We do go up a level, level seven enthusiast. Let's jump over here and it really does not matter at this point. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do some gases. Why not? All right. Well, that's it for today. That's the last job for today. I will, might be adjusting the layout of the episodes, maybe making them the same as American Truck Simulator where we just follow one day that will keep the video length consistent. So until next time, this is Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'm Martin Wenzel. Take care.